This happened during my sophomore year in high school. I remember that I took an elective class that was called Outdoor Activities. It was an easy and fun gym class where we went outside and did stuff. We had a different subject every week and they all revolved around the outdoors. One week we learned how to fish and another we played tennis. For this week in particular, we were going hiking. I remember that we hiked on a path near school grounds earlier in the week. Then later in the week, we took a field trip to a state park that was nearby. The park was pretty large with many different trails on it. Our teacher, Mr. Salieri, was leading the way for the rest of us. The class was not that big and had maybe between 15 and 20 people in it. So on the day of the field trip, we all boarded a school bus and took the maybe 20 minute ride there. The class period was going to go longer than usual and we would be able to skip the first part of our next class. That's something that I was not mad about as my next class period was math. So after we got to the park, we all got off and I saw what the place looked like. There was a lake there and a spot for picnics and stuff. Then there was a bunch of paths and a huge wooded area. Mr. Salieri started down one of the paths into the woods. He walked pretty fast and made it clear to us that we were there to hike and not to mess around. So we started walking and I was walking with one of my good friends, Marcus, who also happened to be in the class. Marcus and I were walking at the very end of the line. We were admittedly moving at a slower pace than everybody else. I remember that we were talking about girls and got really immersed in the conversation. There was a girl that I liked that he was friends with and he was giving me advice and that sort of stuff. We were not really paying attention to the rest of the class very well. The path we were on was surrounded by woods and had a lot of twists and turns. Because of this, it didn't take long for us to not be able to even see the other people in front of us. We didn't really care though, I knew that we could catch back up at any time. As we continued our conversation, at some point, I remember we suddenly heard a noise to the left. It was the sound of twigs breaking and some leaves moving. Something was moving in the woods on the left side. We both automatically assumed that it was an animal at first, but it would have been a large one. I remember Marcus saying, did you hear that? We guessed that it was probably a deer. We paused our conversation and started to look. You couldn't really see anything that far in the woods though. It was really dense. I sort of saw some branches and leaves moving, but couldn't tell what had caused it. We were curious, so we decided to take a couple of steps into the woods. I remember that I sort of made my own path by just stepping through the dense brush. After a few steps into the woods, I could see a little bit better. We kept walking closer and made it in over 10 feet probably. Then I saw some sudden movement up ahead in the woods. I realized that there was a man there. It was not an animal after all. But what was a guy doing right here in the middle of the woods? He was wearing a brown jacket and I could see that he had a messy beard and longer messy hair. He seemed to turn and look at us. That's when we decided to go back to the path. Neither of us said anything and started making our way back in the direction that we had come from. I was a little bit creeped out by seeing a guy just standing in the middle of the dense woods off the path. After we made it back, we continued to walk in the direction that our class had gone. By now though, they were way ahead of us. We were not walking for that long though before we heard more movement in the woods, but closer. It seemed as though the man in the woods was now making his way to the path that we were on. We ignored it and just kept walking. We started to continue our conversation, but then noticed that the man was actually on the path now, and he also seemed to be walking behind us the same way that we were going. He was maybe 40 or 50 feet behind. I glanced back and saw him just walking after us. It was a little weird, so Marcus and I decided to walk a little bit faster. We actually wanted to catch up with the rest of the group now. After a couple of minutes of walking at a fast pace, we could still hear the man. I looked back and he was now walking fast behind us at about the same pace that we were going, and he was probably around the same distance back. We were so far behind the class that we still couldn't even hear the rest of them. But then we came up to a place where the path went three ways, left, right, and straight. 
We had no idea where everybody else went, so we chose to go to the left. After walking down that way a little, we realized that the man had gone that way as well with us. At this point, Marcus and I decided to start jogging. We both played sports and were athletic guys. We would be able to run for a while. There was no way that this guy following us from the woods was going to run too. But we were wrong. He actually started to jog after us. Now there was no question that he was chasing us for some reason. Marcus and I went faster, desperately trying to get away from this guy. The more that we ran, the more that we realized that we had gone the wrong way though. We would have almost certainly caught up to the group by now if they had gone in this direction. But we couldn't go back or else we would run into the man that was chasing us. We just kept running and then decided to go off the path. There was an area where the woods wasn't as thick. Marcus and I both cut off the path and then entered the woods. We continued to run, sprinting through the forest and getting hit by various tree branches. The man ran after us, also leaving the path and entering the woods again. After we ran through the woods for what felt like a long time, we saw another path. We ran to the path and then started jogging down that as well. The man was still behind us. We jogged on that path for only about a minute before leaving and going off of it and into the woods again. We really had no plan and were just winging it. After running through the woods for a while longer, by some miracle, we made it to this opening with another picnic area. There were some tables, another parking lot, and actually people around. We were so glad to see them and emerged from the woods and walked towards them. They had some strange looks on their faces to see us running out of the woods out of nowhere. But when we looked back, the man hadn't followed us out. He was still in the woods. We walked through the picnic area and then there was another path on the other side that sort of went by. Marcus and I didn't really know where to go, so we just walked along the path. We headed down it for a while and about a minute into this path, we heard voices of people up ahead. Then we saw Mr. Salieri and the rest of the class approaching us. They looked surprised to see us, but we were extremely happy to see them. Mr. Salieri asked us where on earth we had come from. We told him the story, and he wasn't mad at us or anything. In fact, he found it funny and was giving us a hard time about it for the rest of the class. I'm really glad that we were able to get away from the guy. I'm not sure who he was or what he wanted from us. Maybe he was mad that we disturbed him while he was walking in the woods. I really don't know but I think it's so crazy that he was literally running after us. That was my most memorable field trip. Back when I was in high school, we took a field trip to a museum in the city. I was a freshman at the time. I lived just outside of the city and our school was close by. It wasn't that far of a field trip, but it was still exciting any time we could get out of our normal class routine. It was an art museum, and I know that we went there for the art class that I was in. We left school shortly after it started and took a bus into the city. We then got dropped off in front of the art museum. When we went inside, we had a brief tour from a tour guide and then we were allowed to walk around the museum freely. I was still kind of new to the school at this time and had transferred at the start of the year. Most of the kids were nice, but I was kind of walking around the museum by myself. I wasn't really hanging out with anyone specifically that day in particular. I remember that about an hour into the field trip, I was in one of the rooms of the museum. There were not that many other people around and the room was mostly dark. I was just looking at some paintings when suddenly I felt a tap on my shoulder. I looked and saw there was a man standing there. He looked to be in his 30s or 40s and I did not know who he was. After getting my attention, he said hi to me. I was confused as to why he was talking to me. He clearly didn't work at the museum and he wasn't part of my class. The guy asked me my name and then asked me what I was doing here. I remember him saying something like, did you skip school today? I told him no, I was literally here on a field trip. He looked around and then saw the few other people in my class around. Then he started asking me more questions about myself. I was kind of creeped out by the guy. 
I tried to end the conversation multiple times, but he would just keep talking to me. Finally, I just said that I had to go and I walked away. He didn't follow me or anything, and I thought that I had gotten rid of him. But sometime later, when I was in a completely different spot, he approached me again. It was basically the same as the time before. He just came up and said hi and then tried talking to me some more. I wanted to walk away from him, but he kept asking me questions and stuff. Finally, once more, I said that I had to go and I walked away. This time though, he kind of started to follow me. He was walking after me until I made it back near my teacher. Then he stayed a distance away. So for the rest of the entire field trip, I was sure to stay sort of near the teacher. He didn't come up and harass me for the rest of the time. But shortly before leaving, I did notice him again. He was standing like 50 feet away and just staring at me. It was so creepy that I had to look away. I was glad when we were finally leaving the museum. After we left, we got back to the school and finished the school day. I later went home. That night, I went on Instagram and saw that I had a new follower. When I looked, it was the guy from the museum. He wasn't using an actual name. I can't remember what his username was though, but the picture was certainly of him. He then sent me a direct message saying hi. I didn't waste any time and I blocked the account. Then I made my account private. What really creeps me out is that I never told him my last name and my first name is pretty common, so I don't know how he found my Instagram. Luckily, I never saw him or heard from him again after that. This happened back when I was probably about 10 years old. I remember that the school that I went to was pretty large, and I had a lot of friends there. One day though, we went on a field trip to the city to watch some dance thing. It was in a large theater, and there was a dance performance on the stage. Our school was taking several classes there, and probably over a hundred kids. I rode one of the buses with my class to the city, and then we were all dropped off. We went inside the theater, which had a very old and nice looking lobby. Then we went into the auditorium, and our teachers told us where we were all supposed to sit. I sat next to my best friend Jake, and we were on the first level in the far back row and on the end. Pretty soon, the dance stuff started. We watched it for what felt like a really long time. I'm not sure exactly how long it was, maybe an hour. Soon though, Jake and I got kind of bored. In fact, I was trying to keep myself from falling asleep. I guess I just wasn't a huge fan of the ballet. Jake suggested that we could just get up and walk around for a bit. This seemed like a good idea to me because of where we were sitting. We were really close to the door and wouldn't disturb anybody by getting up. In fact, most people probably wouldn't even notice. So Jake and I got up and left the auditorium to go back into the lobby area. It was empty now, and we walked out of the lobby down a hallway. This had bathrooms and some benches and stuff. We walked through there, and then there was a staircase going up. We were curious, so we went up the stairs. They led to the second level, which was basically another lobby. That would go to the seats in the upper deck. We explored a little bit more, and there were some other cool rooms. There was a small area that had lots of pictures of performances that had taken place in the theater. There were also other hallways and rooms as well. A few people were around, but not very many. It was more interesting for us to walk around and explore than it was to watch the ballet. As we were walking around, I remember noticing this woman on the second floor. I just remember that she had shorter blonde hair and was wearing a winter hat. As we were walking around, she seemed to follow us. At first, I thought maybe she worked for the theater and we weren't supposed to be walking to Wound over there. I knew that she didn't work for our school. Jake and I decided after a while to go back down to the first floor. When we did, the woman walked a ways behind us and she went down to the first floor as well. But she never approached us to say anything. I remember that Jake went to use the bathroom on the first floor and I stood around the lobby waiting. The woman was just kind of standing around in the corner and looking towards me. I didn't want to ask her what she was doing, but it seemed kind of strange. 
After Jake got out of the bathroom, he came over to me and sat down on a bench in the lobby. That way we could talk and didn't have to be quiet. I noticed that the woman sat down in the corner of the room and was just kind of looking around. Jake and I talked to each other for probably an hour or so and then figured that we should get back to the performance. When we got up, the woman was still sitting there in the corner. Now, at this point, I was still assuming that she worked for the theater in some way, and she maybe thought that Jake and I were up to no good. I did think that it was weird, though. We went back to our seats, and I don't think anybody even noticed that we were donned for so long. We watched the rest of the performance, which went for about two or three more hours. When we got up and left with everybody else, the lobby soon became very crowded. We each had to meet with our classes and take attendance before leaving. When we were out in the lobby, I noticed the woman looking at me from a distance. I thought that this was really weird. Soon we left the theater and boarded our bus, which was parked out front. There were maybe five buses in total, all parallel park on the side of the street. After getting on the bus, we didn't leave for at least another 10 minutes. Of course, the teachers had to make sure that everybody was there and stuff over and over again. At first, right after getting to my seat on the bus, I saw the woman walking now outside. I figured that was that and I wouldn't see her again. But then when we were about to leave, I saw a car pull onto the street behind the buses. I noticed that the same woman was driving this car. Now I found this really odd. Soon after, we left. Our bus was the last one in line and I was sitting in the second to last row. I noticed that this woman was driving behind us the entire way back to school. I thought that it was so strange. I kept looking back time and time again during the bus run, and she was always behind us. When we finally made it back to school, she did not turn into the parking lot but kept going. I went back into school, and when the school day was over, my mom picked me up. I didn't notice the woman after that. After that day, I never saw her again. I'm still really confused by who she was and what she was doing.